Greetings and welcome back to Amos Seed and Feed. Today's lesson is the second argument for sanctification for the Master. And as a reminder, we want to go ahead and look at the definition of sanctification, which is set apart, make holy, active dedication and service to God, active regarding or honoring as holy. These are actions. These are not something that are on a piece of paper we just put in our pocket. It is something that is functional. It is something that we are to move in. And in today's lesson, we're going to discuss more clearly about what that means with regards to the Master. Our Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for this opportunity to come around your word to learn more about who we, who we are to be and our actions towards you as it is supposed to be for you. Be this now, Lord. We ask the same name of Jesus. Amen. Our memory verse for the section on sanctification is 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 for the Master's use, memory verse, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Just want to pause for this moment here. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Good works of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The good works of God the Father. Following God the Holy Spirit. Doing those things that we are to do as Christians and followers of Christ. Jesus actually prayed for his disciples that God the Father would sanctify them. And as he prayed, he was in John chapter 17, verses 14 and 16, we read, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. The opening part of this prayer that Jesus had is actually describing who we are as Christians. Jesus gave the disciples his word. Obviously, they didn't have the New Testament as we have it today. But Jesus, with his own mouth and with his own words, gave them the word of God And by demonstration in his life, demonstrated how they should live their lives. And those that followed Jesus, they were hated, just as Jesus was hated. Because he was not living as the world, he was living as directed of God the Father. Now one thing we need to insert here is that, obviously this is a point in Jesus' life when he's still here on earth. But in in our previous lesson, we discussed the fact that when Jesus died on the cross, it, once we accept, when we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, we follow him in death as he died on the cross. We are buried, the old man is buried, as Christ was buried in the earth. And then Jesus was raised into the glory of God, and we are raised in newness of life. And so we are no longer of this world, and that's what Jesus is talking about. And so Jesus prays in verse 15 that God should keep them from evil, not take them out of the world, because they are witnesses of Jesus Christ, as we are witnesses of Jesus Christ today. Jesus did not pray for us to be taken out of the world once we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, but to remain that we may be witnesses to the world around us. Verses 17 and 19, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. So Jesus uses the base word sanctify three times in this word, in this in this passage here. Sanctify them through the truth. What is the truth? Verse seventeen, the very end of it, tells you what the truth is. It's the word of God. This takes us back to the personal. 
reading, studying, and meditating. Verse 18, as thou hast sent, them, sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. At the very last of the book of Matthew, Jesus says, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. That is our responsibility. We are created into that through Christ Jesus. And in verse 19, And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. This verse actually initially looks kind of awkward, because Jesus says, I sanctify myself. But if we look at the definition of sanctification, this goes to start at the bottom of the list. Act of regarding or honoring as holy. Jesus did that. He honored and regarded God as God the Father is holy. Act of dedication and service to God. Jesus truly did have active dedication and service to God in everything he did. Set apart. He was truly set apart. He was different and perfect than anyone else. And the reason why I skipped make holy is because Jesus was already holy. But all through all these all these definitions of sanctification, Jesus exercised in his life and so should we in our lives that they might also be sanctified through the truth and how are we sanctified through the truth it is God's word we're going to go ahead and go into another passage of scripture here and talk about being sanctified and meat for the master's use and we're going to go to 2nd Timothy chapter 2 and we're going to go down through a list of verses here and the reason why we're going to do this is we did this in the last lesson as well the reason why we're doing this is because of how we are to study it's just not about taking one verse it is taking the verse within the context in which it is written and so what we're going to do is in chapter 2 of 2 Timothy we're going to go down through this and look at the context of what we are discussing today for the master's use. And beginning in verse 14, of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before God that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subver- but to the subverting of the hearers. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Let's just begin with the first part. Strive not about words of no part to no profit. Because what does it do? The result is it subverts the hearers in that it confuses them. It causes them to not understand what is being said. Verse 15. This takes us back again to the personal. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly divine in the word of truth. Jesus prayed that we would have truth. Through, through his truth would be sanctified. And this is how it's done. Rightly divide in the word. And then verse 16. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Profane and vain. Those definitions there are not good. They're not of God. They are just people just rambling along, just saying whatever comes off the top of their head. And all it does is causes you causes the hearers and yourself to increase in more ungodliness because it's not based on verse fifteen, the rightly divided in the word of truth. It is misusing the information. Verse seventeen. And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus. So we see here, pausing for a moment here, that Paul has an example. There's two guys that did contrary to what we're supposed to do. And what was the result? It actually, it, it ate like a canker. <laughs> I'm not sure what a canker is off the top of my head. But it, it's not good. It's it's a physical ailment that is that causes great pain. Verses eighteen, who concerning the truth 
have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrew the faith of some. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having his seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So here we can see what these two people had done. They're saying that Jesus already returned, and all those that are in Christ had already departed this world, which was not true, because we're still looking forward to that as as, as we as we speak right now. And then what did it do? It overthrows the faith in some. They become disenchanted with what the truth truly is in God's word, and they begin to believe things that are going to lead them away from Jesus Christ and living the life that they should. And in verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having his seal. In other words, it doesn't change. God's word remains sure, and it does. It, it's always there in the same place. That's why we're supposed to read and study God's word, because that is where we find our foundation, as it says here. And then there again, the Lord knows, knows who, who belong to him. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's our direction. That's the place we need to go. Now in verses 20 and 21, we find Paul talking to Timothy about, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself of these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Verse 21, we actually had that in, a, in the last lesson, talking about the vessels, and this is where, where this is the context we find it. In verse 20, we find what kinds of vessels there are. Gold, silver, wood, and earth. And then what are they used for? Some are used for honor, and some are used for dishonor. And what and he goes on to teach, If a man therefore purge himself of these, he shall be a vessel of honor. In other words, the wood and earth were used for dishonor. And purging ourselves of those, we become a vessel of honor. And there again, it's the active activity that we should have in our lives of sanctification. And there again, Repeat, repeat what the definition is again. Set apart, make holy, active dedication and service to God, active regarding or honoring as holy. That is the direction we are to go. Now if we go into verses 21 and 24, Paul gives us further instruction. Flee also youthful lust. And Paul is writing to a young man here. And so even as old men... How many men really don't grow up? They hold on to their youth. But it says, flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strives. And the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men apt to teach, and patient. So at the very first, there are instructions as to what our life should look like. Righteous, faith, charity, peace, and of them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. If we call upon the Lord, if we accept that Jesus Christ as Savior, these are the type of attributes we should hold to us. Now, verse 23 there are some that hold foolish and unlearned questions. It says avoid them. All it does is cause problems and strife, arguments and discontentment within within the church and within whoever you're teaching. And it talks about the fact that the servant of the Lord must not strive. And there again this takes us back to we are created in Christ Jesus for the Master. And we are the servant of the living God. We shouldn't strive. And then at the very end of it, it gives us additional information. We are to be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, and patient. And there again, that, that is born out of verse 22. Faith, charity, peace, and out of a pure heart. Verses 25 through 26. 
in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the stare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. So we see here that Timothy is given further instruction, and there we, get, we can actually bring this back to verse 24 from it says that the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men apt to teach patient in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves so it's actually a continuation of what we just read okay, Paul, is, Paul is teaching Timothy to be a preacher to Christians in a church and so Timothy is going to be preaching to Christians to help them grow in Christ and so as I said preventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth in other words, those that strayed, this is what you do. Leading them and pointing them in a the direction that God's word teaches, just like these lessons. Am I where I need to be in Christ from what I've learned in these lessons? Those who are listening here, are you in alignment with God's word as you should? And so that's the purpose of these lessons here, is it is, it is an effort to bring you to the knowledge of the truth. And if you're not in alignment, going to the internal instruction of righteousness, correction, and reproof, bringing you to a point of repentance of what you may not be doing right, bringing you into more perfect alignment with God, our Lord and Savior. And then, verse 12, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. Is it something that's called you to, to trip and fall and not be in alignment with God? are we captive to the devil and his will as opposed to following Jesus and what he would desire in our lives and then that was actually the end of chapter 2 but we're going to move into chapter 3 verses and read some verses here as well because it's actually a continuation of what is found in Timothy chapter 2 this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce bakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. This is a long list. This actually resembles some of the list talking about those who will not inherit the kingdom of God. And in verse, in verse 1, it discussed, this, this know also that in the last days perilous times will come, and men shall be lovers of their own selves. This is what the world is going to look like. And in some cases, we can actually look at the world around us. We have, we have arrived. <laughs> we, are, we are there. And then the interesting thing again is that we talked about Paul as teaching Timothy how to lead a church and be the pastor of Christians. And so as we move into verses 5 through 7, it actually talks about the fact that, he, that verses 1 through 4 that we just read, he's talking about Christians. Because in verse 5 it starts by saying, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow. Having a form of godliness. I guess you could also say that these, these may actually be non-Christians as well that are rooted in the church, but they're really not Christians. They're just going through the motions. And so this is what we need to be aware of. We need to be watchful for these things. And then the fact that what what do they do and what do they teach? They don't teach what is right in the eyes of God. They do not teach what is written in God's, God's word. They may take a verse and expound upon it with no idea or understanding of what the context and what that verse is actually actually in and what it really teaches. And then people just just overwhelmingly just, just ooh and ah about, oh, how, how wonderful it is about what, what's being said. We need to be careful. We need to be watchful as to what is being taught. 
And we also need to be watchful in what we're doing and make sure we're in alignment with God that we don't end up being these these kinds of teachers because we get puffed up in what we're doing and puffed up and and end up doing those things that are not in alignment with God. Verses 8 and 9. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. Janus and Jambres withstood Moses and they were taken out. God took them out of the picture because he resisted the truth. Moses was saying do one thing and they were telling the people no we need to do this instead. They were corrupt. They were reprobates concerning the faith. We don't, we don't want to be that person. We want to remain in alignment with God's word. We want to be a vessel of honor made for the master's use. Those are the things that are in the direction we need to go. And it all goes back to Jesus' prayer where he prayed that he's going to live a sanctified life and he prays that all those that follow him will be, will be protected from evil, that they also may live a sanctified life. Living a sanctified life to be set apart to be made holy, to have an act of dedication and service to God, and an acting of regarding and honoring as holy, those things, those things that are of God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, our memory verse for sanctification. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified in meat for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Hope you found this lesson useful today, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next lesson where we continue on and discuss the next argument of being sanctified in Jesus Christ. Take care and have a great day.